This video is sponsored by Dashlane. Check out the link in the description to find out how you can start using Dashlane for free and get 10% off premium. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and macOS Catalina is finally out. So what better time than to debut some new tips and tricks for macOS Catalina? Okay, macOS Catalina is a big update in a lot of ways, but in one way, it's also the end of an era because after 18 years, Apple is finally saying goodbye to iTunes. So when you boot up macOS Catalina, you might be wondering, where do I find all my music, my podcasts, and my TV shows? Well, that's simple. Apple now has separated these into all of their own separate apps. So the music app obviously now houses all of your local music as well as your subscription to Apple Music. Podcasts now live in the podcast app, and this is actually a nice change because they do a much better job syncing with your other Apple devices now that it has its own app. So, say if you were previously listening to a podcast on your iPhone, you can see that the playback location is synced onto the podcast app on the Mac. The TV app is the place for all of your movies and TV shows, and also your Apple TV channel subscriptions. And it's also the future home of the upcoming Apple TV Plus subscription service that will be launching in November. What's great about the Apple TV app is that now you can finally, and I mean finally, watch all of your movies that you previously purchased in iTunes in 4K resolution on your Mac. Well wait, with no more iTunes, how do I physically sync devices like my iPhone, my iPad, and maybe my iPod? Well luckily, Apple didn't leave all you diehard iPod fans in the cold. Because that information now lives in the Finder. Just simply plug in your device like you normally would, go to the Finder, and you'll see all the options you would normally be used to seeing in iTunes in the Finder. So now you can manage your device, sync your media to your device, or even create a backup. And while music, TV, and podcasts all have new applications, you also want to check out the new Reminders app in macOS Catalina because it gets a big refresh. So not only does the Reminders app get a much needed redesign, but it also gets some brand new features. So for this tip in particular, when using Reminders, you can now write in natural language. For example, if you write pick up coffee tomorrow at 9 a.m., you can see that it will give you a suggestion to automatically set that reminder for tomorrow at 9. And you can specify this by date as well. Furthermore, you now also get even more options if you click on this little information bubble. So now you can select to be reminded at a time, a location, or even be reminded about this when messaging a person through iMessage. And you can even add images to reminders now. For this next tip, have you ever wanted to see how long you've been spending on your Mac or what apps you're using the most, or maybe put time limits on certain apps like games that suck away all of your productivity? Well, now you can do all of that with Apple's brand new screen time feature. To find this, go to system preferences and you'll see the brand new screen time feature. So now you can see your total usage and specific app usage, how many notifications you received and how many times you picked up your device. Or you can even set certain app time limits so you can limit your usage or in reality, use this as a way to manage your children's computer usage. You can even set a specific downtime schedule that will limit all or a specific set of apps on a custom schedule. So you can limit your workaholic tendencies and spend more time hanging out with your friends and family, or you can just turn that off. Okay, another great trick on macOS Catalina is the ability to import a photo or a sketch from your iPhone or your iPad. So you can do this in a couple of ways. One of the ways is you can do this directly on the desktop. All you have to do is right click on the desktop and then you'll see the option to import from either your iPhone or your iPad. So let's say you wanted to import a photo directly from your iPhone's camera. Well, you would select that option and then all of a sudden on your iPhone, the camera app will open up, take a picture of whatever you wanted to take a picture of of, and then it's automatically saved to your Mac's desktop. Furthermore, you can also access this option in other programs like Pages or Notes. So say for example, if you're in the Notes program and you want it to add a sketch to Notes, well, obviously the Mac doesn't have a touchscreen, but if you have an iPad with an Apple Pencil, you can easily doodle something on your iPad. Just like we experienced on the iPhone, all of a sudden the Notes app is going to open up on your iPad and then again, you can draw directly on your iPad and then when you're finished, it will automatically import to the Notes app on your Mac. And importing things like photos into apps was a feature in macOS Mojave, but Apple is seeming to expand that across the system and by adding sketches. And this is one of the benefits of living in that Apple ecosystem and having all of your devices work together. Okay, this next tip is to quickly enable picture in picture mode on your Mac. So now in macOS Catalina, if you're watching something like a YouTube video and maybe you're going to do something else like browse some of your open tabs, but you still hear audio coming from your speakers, well, maybe you wanna keep watching that video very quickly in picture-in-picture -picture mode. 
Well, in macOS Catalina, you can do that just by right-clicking on the tab in the audio playing area. From there, you get a few options, and one of them is to now enter picture-in-picture picture directly from the screen, and bam, now you can watch your content while multitasking. Speaking of tips, one of the most important tips is to use a strong password with every account you create, which is why you should be using a password manager like our sponsor for this video, Dashlane. Dashlane is a password manager that stores your passwords in a secure and encrypted vault so your passwords and data are only available to you. Dashlane will automatically generate secure passwords for your account and works with Apple's built-in Touch ID and Face ID to automatically fill in your passwords for websites and apps so you never have to fill them in manually across all your devices. So your computer and iPhone passwords are all in the same place. And you can store other sensitive information like addresses, secure notes, IDs, and even payment information to make online checkouts a breeze. Listen, we all have so many accounts, and if you're using the same password over and over, you're putting yourself at increased risk anytime there is a data breach, so you need a strong password manager to keep all of your accounts safe. Furthermore, Dashlane even provides dark web monitoring which scans the web for any leaked or stolen personal data and alerts you when necessary. And on top of that, Dashlane also provides a VPN so you can browse the internet securely and privately. Dashlane also works on all platforms whether you're using iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Safari, Chrome, and even Linux so your passwords are accessible to you no matter what device you use. So try Dashlane for free on your first device by heading to dashlane.com gadgets, then to get 10% off premium, use the code gadgets. So be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, Dashlane, and thank you so much to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Okay, this next trick is for my fellow Apple Watch owners out there, and that is to use your Apple Watch as a password. To enable this, go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and set your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. So if you're used to Mac OS Mojave, you could always use this feature to bypass the initial lock screen on your Mac. But with Mac OS Catalina, this actually expands the areas of what your Apple Watch can unlock. So for example, let's say you wanna change something in your system preferences. Now when you go to make that change, instead of having to type in your password, you will get the option now on your Apple Watch. All you have to do is double click the side button and that will activate as a password. You can also use this feature in other applications. So say for example, you have a locked note in notes. Well, when you click on that lock note, you're going to get the same pop-up on your Apple Watch asking you to double click the side button. And again, once you do that, it authenticates and opens up the note. And this is a really great feature, especially for anyone without a Touch ID enabled Mac. So say you're using something like an iMac, all of a sudden you have an easier way to authenticate your passwords. Okay, this next tip is to turn your iPad into either a second screen or a full input device with your Mac. This is of course Apple's brand new sidecar feature. To enable sidecar, you can do this in one of two ways. One of those ways is to go into the AirPlay settings and then you should see your iPad as a device to connect to. And that is one of the ways to connect to sidecar. Another way to access this sidecar feature is to just hover your mouse over the green button in any Mac app. And then you can also use that to enter the sidecar and send that app directly to your iPad. And this is really cool because sidecar works either wired or wirelessly like we're doing in this video and it adds a second display right to your Mac. So you can just use this as a regular secondary display. So for example, say you're traveling with your MacBook Pro and you also have your iPad. Well, now all of a sudden you have a dual screen workstation. So of course that means you can drag Windows and other apps onto that iPad screen. And you can also directly manipulate the iPad screen with some built-in gestures. So for example, say you wanted to scroll through a web page, all you have to do is take two fingers and swipe up or down. Or you can use your fingers to pinch to zoom. Now, while you can scroll and you can pinch to zoom, you actually can't select or really touch any items with just your fingers. If you wanna manipulate your iPad screen directly, you're going to need the Apple Pencil. I think the reason for this is because Mac OS just really isn't optimized for touch. If you take a look at some of the controls here, they are really tiny. So if you're going to tap them with your fingers, it might miss those targets. So if you have an Apple Pencil, that means you can fully control and fully manipulate Mac OS Catalina on an iPad. And I think by far the biggest use case for this feature is the ability to now use your iPad as a graphics tablet for your Mac. This is going to be a great creative tool for a lot of people, especially artists who are using drawing programs or editing photos. 
Okay, this next trick is actually something that's going to be important for a lot of people out there, and that is the ability to control your Mac directly with your voice. Apple actually showed off this feature when they debuted Mac OS Catalina, and I think this is going to be a great accessibility feature. To do this, go to System Preferences, click on Accessibility, select Voice Control to enable this feature, open Safari. Click 9 to 5 Mac. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll up. Quit Safari. Open System Preferences. Click General. Go back. And yeah, I'm not going to go over everything that's in voice control because supposedly you're able to control your entire Mac with just your voice, so there are a lot of options here. And again, I have to reiterate, this is just something that's really great if you need an accessibility feature like that, or again, anyone who just wants to control their Mac with their voice, this is a cool little trick. Okay, and for my last tip, I want to remind everyone that Mac OS Catalina is enabling a new technology called Catalyst that will actually help developers turn their iPad apps into Mac apps. Now, by the time of making this video, there are a limited selection of new Catalyst apps that are available on the Mac. But if you go into the Mac App Store, you should see a selection of some of these new iPad apps that run on the Mac. And this tip isn't about any specific app, but it is a reminder that you should check the Mac App Store from time to time because with this new Catalyst technology, there is a big probability that a lot of iPad apps are going to be coming over to the Mac. Because previously, it was very hard for developers to maintain two separate code bases for their Mac app and their iPad app. So again, this tip is to remind you to check out the Mac App Store because some of your favorite iPad apps might soon be available on the Mac. Okay, and those are gonna be my tips and tricks for Mac OS Catalina. Be sure to let me know what your favorite one was in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, Dashlane, in the link in the description. And hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.